Thank you very much. Um, and thank you for inviting me to uh, speak at this, this illustrious conference. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, my name is Nick Leith, uh, and I work for Green Angel Syndicate, which is uh, an, angel, uh, an angel investment, business investment syndicate of, of uh, 60 uh, private wealthy individuals uh, who are all interested in making angel investments in uh, start-up and early-stage businesses uh, which specialize in, in the, the green economy, in, in companies that are developing innovations in technology and process that are of benefit to the green economy. We define the green economy really in terms of resource use rather than the environment. Uh, and in that sense, we're interested in uh, en energy, water, food, uh, and also transport, sustainable transport. Uh, uh, and so we are very specialist. Uh, and in terms of uh, angel investment syndicates in the, in the UK, uh, we are the only ones that specialize at all. The, the, the great benefit of um, specialization in, in, in terms of angel investments <laughs> is that a, angel investments are the highest risk. They are investments in startup. Uh, and early stage companies, uh, which as we all know, are the companies most likely to fail. Uh, th they are consequently uh, very, very high risk. Th 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 they are also high reward, and, and that actually is the point of them. People talk about the high risk, but they are what um, Nicholas Taleb would call uh, a, 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 an, an asymmetric investment. And what that means is that you, you know entirely what you can lose. You can lose all the money that you've put in to each investment. Uh, however, the potential reward is much, much, much greater than that. The, the potential reward is not twice what you put in. It's potentially three times, four times, five times, 400 times. It can be an, an enormously higher. Uh, and so actually what makes them attractive is what you can earn out of them rather than uh, the, the, the risk uh, of, of what you lose. Um, so, so the value of specialization in that context uh, is that w w we are people uh, that know the markets that we invest in in some considerable detail. Uh, and, and that means that unlike other angel investment syndicates who will invest in all sorts uh, of technologies and processes and innovations and startup companies, we will only uh, invest in, in companies that, that, that are aimed at market sectors that we really know and understand. So it has a, a, a niche uh, in the UK market, which is very particular and, and, and very useful, both in terms of de-risking the, de the investments uh, and then in terms of actually helping the companies that we invest in to succeed because we know a lot about what they're doing and we can offer them expertise that might not be available to them in other ways. Uh, ju ju just a, a note on, on me personally and why I'm doing it. Uh, my background uh, is originally London advertising on mainstream consumer brands, the very brands whose consumption is, is something I'm now trying to suppress. But what I understand is, is, is mainstream consumer marketing and business-to-business -business marketing and sales. I then uh, moved over to, to the marketing side uh, and developed my own marketing and sales consultancy. Uh, and and it, I won't bore you with the reasons why I then moved into resource use. One or two of you in the audience know the answers to that question. I, 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 I um, helped set up and run an applied research institute that was specializing in, in resource use innovations. Um, and that's what then helped me to, to realize there was an opportunity uh, in setting up the syndicate that I've set up. Um, so uh, my perspective on everything that I do uh, is whether or not the companies that I talk to are going to be able to sell the, the products or services that they're making. Uh, and there is a very simple rule that I live by and have lived my entire working life by, which is that if you, if you can't sell it, you can't succeed. Uh, innovation, uh, technology innovation, uh, inventions, good ideas, 
they're easy. In a mature capitalist free market economy, the difficult bit is selling them. And if you've invented the cleverest thing in the world, but there is somebody who is better than you at selling something like that, you will not succeed. Uh, and, and I find I go to a lot of conferences where people go on and on and on about their, their inventions, their technologies, their, their ingenuity, uh, whatever world it's in, IT, engineering. Uh, and I sit and I, I don't care about that. It doesn't matter how clever their technology is. What matters is whether they, c they can access a market and generate the demand for what they've just made. So that's my particular perspective. Uh, I, I have two questions in the, um, uh, against my name in the program. Uh, one of them is, is uh, how to attract investment more effectively. The other is, is, uh, is the clean tech sector different from other market sectors? They're completely different to topics. Uh, I can talk about either, uh, and I would be very happy to talk about um, either, or I could talk about both. But what I'd like to know is who you are and what you want to hear that I can tell you which will be most useful for you. So, so, so tell me, hands up, who in the audience is an entrepreneur who is interested in raising investment? We have one, yes, all right, so there's a handful. of. Do I take it that each of you would be interested in the first topic, which is how to attract investment, yeah. rather than yeah, caring about whether clean tech is a different market? from others. Okay, um, what about, who else, who, who, what about the rest of you? What is it that you want here? Who is from uh, a corporate? Uh, okay, we've got, we've got a handful, a handful of those. So you presumably don't, you're not interested in how to raise investment in the least? No. You'd like, you, would you like to hear about why I think clean tech is a different market sector to other market sectors? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, what have I missed? Hands up who hasn't held their hand up. <laughs> yeah, yes, I know you. I know who you are, Ava. Hands up, so apart from Ava, hands up again. So where are you from and what are you interested in? You're, I know you, Marty. Yeah, so you're interested in both, really. What about you? Oh, so you, you're with him, so you're interested in that. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Um, and uh, who have I missed? You two. What about you, the lady in the yellow? Well, in general, everything, so... You're interested in both. All right, I wonder if I should try and do both. And what about you? Same thing. Same, okay, okay, okay. All right, is that the right time? Yes, it's So I've got 25 minutes? Yes. All right. Uh, in which case, I'll, 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 I'll try and do justice to both. Um, I, I should uh, start by saying there's an, an, an inherent tension, actually in both, in, in, that relates to how you raise investment uh, and the, 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 the clean tech market. Uh, and the, the, the tension is between um, uh, in, in the, the, probably the most difficult tension is the tension between innovation and market demand. Uh, and when you're trying to attract investment for innov innovative technologies or processes, you, you're facing this tension square on. Uh, if you're innovating, you're doing something that nobody's done before. By definition, there is going to be no market demand for it. By definition, as you start to innovate with whatever it is you're doing, the market, as it stands at the moment, is not buying that. It's buying something else. Uh, and the difficulty is, is balancing that tension between uh, a lack of market demand uh, and the, uh, the, the innovation that you've created. Um, and really, the, the, what you want to do in an ideal world is create market demand. Uh, that's an easy thing to say if you're a Procter & Gamble or a Unilever and you've got enormous pockets. I, I um, first started my working life working on Procter & Gamble uh, in, in advertising um, and 
learnt a lot about their, uh, the history of their, um, their development. They're past masters. The consumer markets are past masters at, at creating market demand. They, they do it to, to create the growth that they require. Uh, and one of the case histories they used to tell when uh, I was young was uh, the development of fabric conditioner, uh, which we now all use in our washing machines. Uh, well, in the 1950s, nobody had heard of fabric conditioner. Nobody knew they wanted it, nobody knew they needed it. Procter & Gamble developed, uh, and Unilever in competition, developed a, product, a completely new product category for which no demand existed. They created the demand. However, if you're a Procter & Gamble or a Unilever, you have very deep marketing pockets, uh, and it's, it's, it's not difficult. But if you're a startup company developing a water treatment process, as I know uh, some in this room are, uh, it's extraordinarily difficult because you don't have millions and millions to develop the demand that, that you know you need. So, so that's a huge challenge. It, the, the other tension that is very important to recognize to all of those who are concerned with the clean tech sector uh, and resource use is the tension uh, between um, resource efficiency and, and, and uh, developing innovations which mean we use less uh, of the resources that, that um, we're, we're using. Uh, and, and the tension between that and, again, in a free market capitalist economy, the, the, the requirement for growth. Um, my syndicate has invested in a couple of energy efficiency technologies, uh, and, and at least one of them is, is, is needing, in order to generate the distribution channels that it requires, to connect up with the, the big energy companies and actually to partner them. Uh, and in a logical world, the energy companies will need these in, in, in ten, their energy storage products. Uh, and in, in 10 years' time, we'll all use products like this. The product category will be big. But the energy companies are made up of uh, um, teams of employees who earn their living out of selling energy. They don't want to sell less. They want to sell more. Uh, and, and indeed, their salaries and bonuses and, and, and the profits of the companies they're working for depend upon them selling more, not upon them selling less. Uh, and that's a fundamental tension. Um, that, I, I think what I'll do is I'll do a little bit on the clean tech sector, uh, because that tension leads directly in, in, into clean tech. Uh, is clean tech different from other markets? Yes, of course it is. There's a very simple reason why clean tech is different from other, other markets. It's concerned with resources and resource use, and it's concerned with the way we are husbanding the planet's resources for a global economy. Uh, and what it's trying to do uh, is allow us to use those resources in a way that is going to serve the, the 7 billion plus uh, global, community, global community that we now are. Um, you know, George Soros in the, 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 the 1990s said, said a hideous thing. Right? He said that the hedge funds were the only game in town. Um, uh, and the reason why it's hideous is because hedge funds are an entirely artificial product which had no value whatever uh, in, in any way. The only thing they did was make very, very rich people even richer. Uh, and George Soros was one of those people. Um, here we are in 2017, uh, and it is absolutely obvious to, 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 to anyone who looks that not only are the resources stretched that we require for life, the resources of water, food, energy, uh, in serving the, the uh, global community, they're already broken. There are millions of people in Central Africa who are starving because there's not enough food. There are uh, millions of people who don't have enough water, and we see the consequence of that in the migration from northern Africa to, to uh, southern Europe uh, all the time. Um, many people neglect uh, to mention when they deal with the Syrian civil war uh, and the rise of ISIS uh, and, and the amazement this causes in the developed West. How, how do people really believe in such a fanatical cause? Uh, and do such crazy things? Well, the answer to it is unbelievably simple. They're short of water. There is nothing that radicalizes a man or a woman more than being unable 
to, to provide the water that their family need to live, at that point, you are prepared to kill. Because if you don't kill, your children will die. That caused the huge movement from the, the rural areas of Syria into the cities uh, of people who were desperate to get their hands on the levers of, of water control uh, so that they could, they could control it. Of course they wanted to topple the government. The government was not providing them with what they needed. There's a term that, again, gets used very rarely in the public media, water wars. That's what ISIS did. ISIS would go into villages uh, and towns and cut off the water supply to the rural areas until the people in the rural areas came in and joined ISIS because they needed water. It's not difficult to understand, nor is the fanaticism and extremism difficult to understand. It's obvious. And it will, be, it, it will be bad and get worse until we start to deal with water in a way that provides water for those who at the moment don't have it. And if we don't do that, uh, it's not only going to continue to be bad, it's going to get worse. In, and in the end, it's going to get worse for us directly. That migration northwards is going to get more and more and more. So the reason why clean tech is different is because it deals with resources that we can't do without, the lack of which is going to, going to destroy us. Uh, and in that sense, whatever happens to the global economy in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, whatever the struggles in the different market sectors to make money, money will be made out of innovations in technologies and processes that relate to uh, water, that relate to food, that relate to energy. Uh, the only question is, what will, those, what will the winners be? What are the technologies going to be that actually succeed? Uh, and, and that's part of my job. Part of my job is to look at all of the innovations that are presented to us on, on, a, on a daily basis, I might, I might say. Uh, and they cover various different uh, sweet spots. There's, there's, there's themes that, 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 that where I see innovation after innovation after innovation. Uh, and my, my job is to try and judge which ones are the ones that, that are going to make money. Uh, and of course, that's very, very difficult to do. Uh, but it makes clean tech an inc incredibly exciting area. Uh, and I would say to George Soros that he was a fool in the 1990s because those problems were already there then. And by ignoring them in the 1990s and concentrating on idiotic things like hedge funds, we as, as, as a Western economy neglected to do the very thing uh, which we're now suffering from badly, which is look after the communities where the money was running out. So yes, of course clean tech is different. Uh, I would also say clean tech is an absolutely useless word. I don't know why we use clean tech. Clean tech developed as, a, as a, uh, an area in the 1990s in the wake of, of an equally useless linguistic phenomenon, which was sustainable development, another uh, mangling of the English language in a way that nobody understood. Uh, and of course, the politicians then uh, abrogated responsibility for developing sustainable development by creating Local Agenda 21. And Bill Clinton uh, and John Major and all of the leaders at the Rio Earth Summit that that gave us Local Agenda 21 and said, yes, we believe in sustainable development. We need it. And we, as good leaders and, and politicians, are, are um, signing up to uh, sustainable development. But um, what does it mean? Uh, yeah. Um, no, no, we don't know. Uh, we have no idea what sustainable development means. I'll tell you what. You tell us. So we'll create Local Agenda 21, and you can go away and work out what it means for your region uh, and come back uh, and, and say to us um, what you're going to do. And so, of course, uh, lo regional, local governments the whole world over struggled to define what sustainable development meant in the context of their Local Agenda 21. And sustainable development limped along, as we all know, uh, uh, until... Um, uh, until Al Gore and uh, Nicholas Stern uh, in 2005-2006 uh, swept it away with the carbon agenda and climate change. Uh, and suddenly there was something that everybody could understand. Uh, and that's what really then s started to drive political commitment to, to, to the area. Clean tech was 
created as a term in, the, in, in that period. Uh, and there was an awful lot of, uh, there were an awful lot of public and private um, monies that went into clean tech. Uh, by and large, the clean tech investments um, concentrated on one area, and that was renewable energy. It was the one area that everybody could understand. Uh, and so that, that a, a lot of money was poured into to, to wind farms, to solar energy, uh, and to the, um, the development of, of exploring uh, tidal and wave. Uh, and, and all the various different renewable energies were, were developed under the clean tech banner. Most of those, in, in, in most of those uh, in investments failed. Uh, and in fact, clean tech in the private investment sector became a dirty word, and, and people really stopped being interested in it in around 2010, 2011. Uh, Post-crash, it's fair to say, they, they lost interest because it had done incredibly badly. It had done incredibly badly because they were not really commercially viable investments. Uh, what they were was um, uh, uh, business projects that depended upon public subsidy. And anything that depends upon public subsidy is bad business. It's not commercially viable in the long term. Uh, and so all of those investments tended to do badly. Clean tech um, funds, clean tech investment funds did badly, uh, and the clean tech word became slightly toxic. It was an awful word anyway. I mean, clean, is it clean? Tech, is it, is it, is it tech? You know, we knew, we've known how to generate electricity from, from uh, wind since, since the 19th century. It's not technology, it's obvious. Similarly, solar, maybe photovoltaic was comparatively new, but uh, it's, not, it's not terribly complicated. Um, is it clean? Well, is it clean? I suppose it's not coal. That was, that was the reason why clean, I think, was used. Uh, but uh, that only relates to energy. What about other sectors? I mean, again, coming back to water, uh, water purification, water treatment uh, is an incredibly important area of innovation that get banded under clean tech, uh, but it's very dirty. I mean, it starts dirty, it ends up clean, of course, but is the technology clean? I, I, I don't know. It's, 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 um, and that, that illustrates another point. I just, in the same, the, 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 the same, in two succeeding sentences, referred to renewable energy generation, which in itself divides into seven or eight different sectors, and uh, water treatment, which is a completely different sector. Clean tech is used to describe a whole number uh, of different areas, which are exactly that. They're different. Uh, I find in all, uh, in all work and in all life that uh, effectiveness depends upon precision. Precision defines what you're trying to do and how you're trying to do it. By being imprecise, uh, you will end up by being ineffective. Clean tech is an utterly imprecise term, and it's one that, personally, I, 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 ne I never use if I, I can help it. So is the clean tech sector different? Yeah, of course it's different. But it's not the clean tech sector. What's different is resource use. Uh, and coming back to another, uh, uh, um, uh, let's say, conceptual model that we've created. This isn't about carbon. This isn't about climate change. Cli climate change and carbon emissions are consequences. They're not purposes. They are the consequences of having abused the way we've used resources over 100, 150 years longer. The consequences are the carbon emissions and the climate change, which are potentially catastrophic in themselves. But they are not the problem. The problem starts with what we've done with resources and what we are doing with resources. Uh, and that's what we have to put right. Uh, and so I, I, I'm, I, I'm not interested in the environment. I'm not interested in carbon emissions. I'm not interested in climate change. What I'm interested in is the technologies uh, and the processes that are going to innovate in the way that we use resources that means that we're going to use them more efficiently, more effectively, and more responsibly. And the consequence of that will be, first and foremost, that we can maintain human life on the planet. 
the, 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 the byproduct of that is that, um, the, and if you like, the, the means by which we measure that will be how we reduce carbon emissions and how the atmosphere is corrected and how climate change is put right. But that's where it comes. It becomes at the very end. And any business that I hear, which starts off by explaining to me how they're going to do something great for carbon emissions, is a business that I'm not interested in. I want to hear about what they're going to do with the, the resource use, the aspect of resource uses that they're dealing with. Uh, which then brings me on to, to, to um, how uh, to, to um, attract investment. And a, what I've just said is, is a clue. Attracting investment is incredibly easy. Um, I, I was asked whether I wanted what, what, but by Tina, who I don't think I see here, uh, what um, motto I wanted attached to my name. Uh, and I, I was asked what song I wanted uh, that was attached. Was it you who asked me? Team. Ah, yeah. I, I don't want either. I don't want. I don't, I don't want any distractions. I don't want to use PowerPoint. I, don't want, I want you to listen to me. I want you to understand what I am going to say and am saying to you. You might not be interested in it. You'll go to sleep. But you might be. You certainly are not going to be interested in a screen behind me. You certainly... Well, you might be interested in, in the music. I mean, I, I, I thought maybe... Siegfried's funeral march would be a good one for me. Uh, uh, and and, and I, I mean, Siegfried's funeral march is one of the most wonderful pieces of music ever written, in my view. Uh, uh, but but, but it's, it's music, and you might sit and listen to it and think, oh, I wish, I wish we could just listen to more of that and not him. Uh, so I don't want music. I don't want a motto. I just want to be me, and I want you to hear what I've got to say in the most effective way. Uh, that's the first rule. If you're presenting a business to a bunch of investors, explain the business. Just get on with it. Say what you do, say why you do it, say who you're doing it for. And that's the second most important thing. Uh, who are you doing it for? Uh, I said earlier, if you can't sell it, you can't succeed. What I want to hear when I look at a business and, and uh, consider whether or not I want to recommend it to our syndicate for investment, uh, is um, who's going to buy it? Why do you think they're going to buy it? What evidence can you provide that they're going to buy it? Uh, and if you can't do that, then I'm not terribly interested, really. It goes back to the people who go on and on and on about the technology. Um, uh, and... and uh, uh, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm not a scientist. I don't understand technology. I'll take the technology as read. If you tell me it, it's going to purify water and it's sort of going to remove, I, that's what I need to know. I don't. I, even when you start to say it's going to, to 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 take the zinc out and things like that, I'm lost. I barely know what zinc is, let alone why it's a problem. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I I get that. Okay. So that's what you do. Tell me who you're going to do it for. Uh, and then the third thing with um, uh, investment presentations uh, is, is the team, uh, who you are. And that again comes back to the person who's standing up talking to you. Uh, and if um, I feel I'm hearing somebody who is using gimmicks or who is uh, who's using music and mottos, then I think, oh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's get to the point. I want to know you, what you who you are and what you're going to do. Uh, and, and, and that, uh, too, is, is uh, very, very simple and very important. Uh, and I, I, I've spent my life as a salesman in, in, in my young years in advertising. What I was doing was selling the agency. Uh, and that's... Uh, um, I then... <coughs> I worked briefly in the alcoholic drinks industry. Uh, where I, I also worked as a, a salesman and a marketing man. Um, that was probably the easiest period of my life uh, because selling alcoholic drinks is... It, well, selling alcoholic... It, it's not easy, but everybody, everybody likes alcoholic drinks. So you're starting off um, with an advantage. 
you also have the absolute joy. I was given the responsibility for North America, so I used to go around uh, the USA and Canada. Uh, and part of my job was to encourage people to drink the drink uh, by drinking it with them. Uh, and that meant I spent I was three years working for that company, and possibly, possibly I, it was not a moment too soon when I stopped because I just went around drinking it. And that, that really was very enjoyable. But the, 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 the rest of my... I then went back into consultancy uh, and, and was selling my own consultancy again. Uh, and there's a very hard lesson, which, which uh, certainly in the UK, maybe less so in Finland, but in America not at all, uh, it, it's hard to do and hard to understand, but selling means selling yourself. It doesn't matter what, what it is you've got, you're selling yourself. And that's another reason why I don't want mottos and I don't want music, uh, because I've got nothing to sell any of you other than the words I speak, uh, and I'm keen that you're interested in them. But if you're not, I'm, my, my business isn't going to suffer. Uh, who knows? If I do, then my business may do a little bit better as a result. But, but um, I'm selling myself, and that's why I want you to look at me and listen to me. And if anybody is trying to raise investment from me, I want them to do the same thing. And it's not only that I want to do it so that I can buy it, I want to see that they're able to sell to the people they're going to sell to. So if they can do it to me about their company, I can believe that they might be able to do it to their potential customers about their products and services. I think I'm bang on 10. It's a very good idea to have that clock there. Thank you all very much for listening. <laughs>